All right, guys. So today we are changing complete job locations. Today, today we are moving to a first thin. It's uh, y'all watched me cut the set out yesterday, uh, or whenever the last video was. Y'all watched that uh, with the with the seven eighteen. See, it's just that in there. It's just another video day. So anyway, uh, we're fixing to get Michael down here. They're just pulling back up with the box of chains. We're going to stick hit Michael over here and push these bushes out right about where that pink flagging is. Mickey's going to sit right there. We're going to put Mickey here. We're going to put Matthew's loader about where the rubber tire cutter is. And uh, we're going to put the box over here on the other side of Mickey. We have about 60 acres to cut here. So quite a bit of acreage. Uh, probably going to be damn near two loads to the acre, which is going to be really, really good for us. Um, so yeah, we're going to be setting up loaders first and getting everything, you're gonna watch us get everything set up. Come on, do it again. Stay back here in the background clowning me. Still a little explaining here while we're watching them. Say so he picks the nose of the loader all the way up where it gets all the weight on this one back axle back here. 
See how his front axle ain't even touching the ground. It pivots easier that way. If you don't pick it up, you run the risk of two things. One, the biggest thing is knocking a tire off the wheel, especially if you, if you have a low leaky tire. Number two, it helps it not dig in the ground so hard whenever you go to screw like that, screw it around. If you do that and the, you have a bad road, you basically just corkscrewed your loader into the ground. Let's go out here and take a look at this tongue mechanism. I know a few people, a few people have asked about the tongue on it or how do my skitters move it. What he's grabbed right there, you see how it's inside that piece of pipe. What it does is it slides inside that piece of pipe. I'm gonna let y'all watch him shove it in with the skitter for those of you that are new. Step over here so we can watch him. But what that does is it slides in and out and you can grab it with the, the grapple. Oh, he's not gonna, he's gonna push his pile of dirt first. But what it does is it slides in and out and he can just pull it out with his blade and grab it with his grapple and move the loader around with the skitter. And then whenever he gets done and he shoves it in and then this trash don't pile up on it for the, the delimitate or the, the pull through there when he cuts his tops off. What he's doing over here right now is he's pulling stumps up. That's right about where that stump was. That's about where that delaminator is going to sit. Now we're going to watch him push his pile of dirt up and get everything ready to get the delimmer in here. Or the, del the delaminator. The box of chains, man. The box of chains. There you go. You can see Mickey's bucket. It ain't dripping oil no more like what it was. Now he's gonna place his outriggers down, get everything nice and settled in, and he's ready to start delimbing wood just as soon as we get Michael push a pile of dirt up and get the delaminator set up. So before anybody asks what we're keeping this big chunk of wood up here for, this is what he uses to sweep his bushes and stuff out of his road. Whenever uh, he gets done loading the truck, he'll take and sweep his road up with that. You watch. See, Michael's going to get up against that. You see how he got up against it with his blade and it just slid right in? If I knew he was going to do that, I'd have stayed down on the ground longer. But so now he's going to push his pile of dirt up.
if y'all remember how I was explaining in a previous video a couple days ago, if I remember right, I was talking about getting that nose up like that. This is why we use a pile of dirt to get the incline in the machine. And I'm gonna let y'all watch Mickey put the first couple buckets through it and you'll watch how fluid this is gonna go through versus I think he wants it a little bit closer to him. Maybe he wants to pull back this way a little bit. But anyway, you'll watch how smooth it just flows through it versus you having to, to fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight to get that mess in there. If it, even if it's level, it's still hard on you. All right, so I think we're set up. We are ready to bust this baby doll off. Let's get it going. Huh? Is it? Hey, stick your hand in there, Michael. Catch one of them chains. Well, we gotta go get that one back there. We're trying to hit that back uh one. Uh-oh. She's swinging over, ain't she? What's she like? Yeah. I wonder why it's doing that. Oh, no. It's awful close. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Oh. Uh-oh, he forgot to idle it up! Okay, so I lied to y'all. I didn't get the first couple of buckets, but we got a few buckets on the ground. And, uh, I need to cut that one little bit of tree there for him. Sometimes he does a little bit of a too, too good of a job. I'd have just left that there. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, y'all can watch the, the loader as he goes into the box with his stuff. You know, basically, all he's doing is putting his, his small stuff in there and topping it. Because the meal we're going to do today is very strict on top restrictions. Our, our t personal meal, or whatever you want to call it, meal is out. They're down for the rest of the week. But did y'all see how, as he put it in there, how it, it, it just walks itself to the back of the wall? That's the important thing with using that pile of dirt and getting that nose inclined like we do. I'm not saying, whenever I'm showing y'all something we do, I'm not telling you that if you're doing it a different way that you are wrong or I'm perfect and I'm the best way that there has ever been. My ways are pretty good. Uh, our ways, have you want to word it. He had to wait on it to rev up. He didn't get his button mashed in time. Y'all saw how it just, it just swoop right down in there to the back wall she goes. That's what you're looking for. But whenever I'm showing y'all how we do something and I'm explaining stuff to y'all, I'm not saying this is the best way to do something. Everything, logging is a dynamic situation. This may be this perfect situation right here today but tomorrow, or in another set location, this may not be the perfect lo the perfect scenario set up situation for, for us or even y'all. It depends on your ground, your, your timber that you're working, whether it's big stuff, small stuff, hairy stuff, slick stuff. It's all situational. So 
y'all keep that in mind when I'm explaining stuff to y'all. I'm not saying my way's the end all be all. Okay? I, I think I misinterpret that with some people sometimes. Some people think I, when I'm explaining something that I'm explaining that, that this is the end all be all way of doing things. And that, that is not it. I'm showing y'all the way that we have learned that it works best for us in the situation that we're working at that time. So, all right, I gotta go get busy on the rubber tire cutter. All right, so we got the uh, got a pretty good little pile going now. I actually cut one whole row with the with the rubber tire cutter. Y'all see it sitting there? The track cutter is here, and uh, we're fixing to swap over to it. But we punched a whole row all the way through. It's almost three and a half tenths of a mile from right there where that row starts up to the other end down there. So I got one whole row cut all the way through and now that I have the knowledge of my ground all the way from front to back of this track, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to stop not quite halfway across it from this set and work about 30 acres of this track to this set. And then I'll leave about 30 acres to go to the other set over there. Maybe a little bit more, depending on how my SMZs and stuff lay out back there, because that on the back side back there is actually going to be some really good places, a place to be during a, a rainy event. And that's one of the reasons we're here is because rain is coming Rain is actually supposed to start tonight. They're predicting, depending on where, where the stuff sets up, we're looking at either two to three inches or we're looking at a half an inch. <laughs> you know, not a big variance at all there.
right, so while we're watching him fit, getting finished loaded there, this is going to be our first complete load off of this track. You can see we got the other loader in here now. We ain't using it just yet. Matt's on the rubber tire running some down rows ahead of me. I imagine he gets done with that one that he's on. We'll uh, put him on the loader for the rest of the evening because we're starting to get a little bit ahead already on the cutting side. All this loader over here is going to do is dig trash, dig bushes, cut the top and hand it off to Mickey. And then Mickey's going to run it through the box and put it in his pile. That's how me and Mickey was doing it last year in just about any bad stuff. Me and Mickey was doing 12 loads a day together in that. In the worst stuff that we could get in. So It's starting to try and rain already. It's done rain. I don't know if it's raining. No, I don't see our little floater bobber thingy in rain gauge floating yet. So it ain't rained enough to do that. Y'all can see on the truck though. I mean, it's it's not like oh my god wood, but it's decent little first thinning. Biggest thing is it's clean underneath in the woods. It's got vines, but for the most part, there's like no bushes, and it's just super uniform. It's just, it's just some of that stuff that when, if you work plantation timber, it's just that kind of stuff. It just, it just makes wood. So, all right, I gotta go get them some paperwork for this mess. Right, so I figured I'd let y'all watch the loaders here for a little bit, wrap this video up, let y'all watch, see how they're working in tandem together like they are. It's a pretty sufficient uh, process, kind of like what I was explaining earlier, is because I show you one way of doing something, don't mean that's the end all be all. I do believe that the most efficient way, especially when you're trying to pile wood, 
is to have your delimitator out here beside your loader in the you know out in the set. But Matthew's not always on his loader, and Mickey, you know, in this scenario here, it is better for this loader closest to us to just pull the bushes out, cut the tops off, hand it off to the next man, and Mickey do all the truck loading. Gets things done faster. We get in, get everything rounded up faster at the end of the day. Golly. And Liam shot out of them tops like a missile. Anyway, guys, it's trying to rain. I'm getting wet. I'm going to melt. I need y'all to go down below, find that subscribe button, hit that baby doll for me. Look, I see a, a, a no good truck driver pulling up to get a load of wood. We'll hang out till he gets back on the loader so y'all can see the pup for the day. But I need y'all to go down below, find that subscribe button, click it, smash it, jump on it, whatever you want to do. Then you need to go down in them comments and you need to tell me what you enjoyed about today's video. If you don't mind, if not, that's cool too. Do what you want to do. And then I need you to hit that like button on the video or the dislike if you didn't like today's video. Either way, whatever floats your boat. Watch that thing chew that wood up. Arr, it's like a thousand hungry beavers in there. Anyway, guys, puppy needs to hurry up. I'm starting to get wet. Like I said, I'm a milk. We're going to wrap up today's video. Decent day for having to move. We're still going to end up with eight. That should put us at 38 for the week, which is not bad. We'll probably only get to do eight again tomorrow if the rain will allow, and if that's so, then we'll end up with 46, which is still, for a four-man crew, it's a very decent week. There's the pup. There's that old dirty dog. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go subscribe for me if you're not already. I appreciate everybody's support, and until the next video, we'll catch y'all next time.